listening to Doris Radio on WHCP 101.5. What's up, guys? You're listening to Doris Radio on WHCP 101.5. I'm your host, Marco Garcia, and I'm excited to be joined today with Gray Jimenez. What's up? What's up, Gray? What's up? How we doing, y'all? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. Gray, Gray, yes. Gray. Gray, you guys, is a phenomenal, phenomenal woman who is the um, founder of Worldwide Hope. And um, we've been working together for the last year. Yes. And, you know, she's just, you, you amaze me in so many ways. And I'm so excited to, you know, share your story because yes. um, it's, in, it's in incredibly inspiring and it's something that I feel um, can really resonate with a lot of people, especially in our community. And um, so I'm <laughs> excited, you know, to have you on today. And I'm excited to catch up too. on air. <laughs> and um, so, but before we go into uh, the worldwide hope, let's go back to the beginning Sorry. and um, tell me, tell me about you growing up and where you're from and what that was like. Right. Well, I'm mm-hmm. originally from the state of. Veracruz, Mexico, mm-hmm. and I grew there in a small village, mm-hmm. maybe with 3,000 people mm-hmm. um, in the middle of the mountains. Like, mm-hmm. all you see is just nature. Uh-huh. And I feel like everything, everything started in my childhood. I was, uh-huh. I was always in love with nature. Mm-hmm. Like, I was always getting lost in the forest looking for... I, in my mind, I was like a magical world. Uh-huh. So... My mom always, she was always looking for me because I was always in the forest um, playing with flowers and looking for the bees. I was like uh-huh. very curious about how the animals add and um, interact. And I was always amazed about the war in nature. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like everything starts over there, like uh-huh. feeling this love for nature. And then um, uh, and. My mom told me sometimes uh, that I've been always around kids. Like when I was 15, I was always helping a church and the schools, helping with kids. And I feel like it, that uh-huh. that was m- my mission started when I it was, was a child. It was starting then. Yeah, that was the uh-huh. beginning. And I always ha- was having this feeling in my heart. Like uh-huh. I came here to do something different. Uh-huh. It was not just to be like normal. <laughs> I wanted different, and I was. I've been always looking like the war is like a magical place. <laughs> I always say that. And when I moved here, I was 18. Uh, I came to an, with a work visa at the Clayton speaking crafts, and um, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know how to speak English. I didn't know nothing. I was in high school when I moved here. Um, and you came here alone. I came here with boyfriend. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And we start working, and that's a different story. Mm-hmm. But like I always say, I was having this feeling like mm-hmm. it's something amazing in my life. Uh-huh. Like I had to do something different. Like I'm not just uh-huh. here to just work and work. Mm-hmm. I need to do something. Uh, but uh, the story begins like eight years ago that I, when I started learning English, I was like feeling like having this feeling that I need to work with a community, the Latin uh-huh. community. So I've been working with the Latin community for, I guess, like 10 years. Uh-huh. Uh, doing translations, try to find like support mm-hmm. and all these resources that so many people don't don't know. So, and I've been doing activities like back then, because I was working at the Lutheran Mission and Salvation Army, and mm-hmm. I always was like looking for support for my community. Mm-hmm. And um, that's how I learned English. I just be around um, people. And uh, took uh, six months of English at Chesapeake College, and that was it. Dang. That was it. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a long story. I think it would take like, phew. Tell me about that time, and you know, you said um, that was what inspired you to want to work with the Latin community. Yeah. Um, when you first came here, what were some of the uh, struggles that you wow. you faced, and that that made you want to go into that field? Yes that you saw as, uh, you know, gaps and that we yeah. need to take. It was just so hard. It was just so hard. Like, you come here in a different country. Um, mm-hmm. You miss your family. You don't have uh-huh. support. And you don't know the language. You don't mm-hmm. know nothing. It was just a struggle for me. I was carrying my dictionary everywhere. Because <laughs> I didn't know uh-huh. nothing. 
And then when I start learning like the basics, like how to say my name and, mm -hmm. um, you know, fill up like applications like for uh, medical or the stuff, um, I was like, when I finally learned, I was like, um, it's time for me to start helping my people. Mm -hmm. And I just did it. I was like, I'm here for you guys because I know the struggles because uh -huh. I've been through that. Uh -huh. And I was only only 18 and it was not interpreters back then. Yeah. Right now you can find like a Spanish line and other stuff. But like when I was here, well, I didn't, I didn't know that it was like a Spanish line and all that. Mm. So I remember my first job was at the Fasten Maggie. Okay. As an interpreter. The health and clinic. I know, and uh -huh. I, but I only knew like Maybe 10% of English, but I was <laughs> there trying to help my people. I was uh -huh. there. Then um, there, and then I started doing translations at social service, uh -huh. uh, the courthouse, and I don't even know how I did it. Cause <laughs> but I I always, I, I'm a person that always say, like, if you have opportunity, just take it. Uh -huh. Take it, and you have the ability to help others do it. Yeah. Do it, support you, you people, and help them. Especially when you had those struggles, and I just, it was just so hard for me. <sighs> I, it's just so many memories, and um, just to not be able to find transportation, or had to ask for transportation to go to the hospital if you are sick. Oh, and then when I had my first child, mm -hmm. wow, that was so hard. Uh, we were in the hospital, and we didn't know nothing. We didn't know yeah. how to explain or had to ask for help. It was just so like hard. Like what you're going through. What yeah. you're going through. Mm -hmm. It was just, it's hard. It's just mm -hmm. so hard. And um, all that experience just made me, like, put on somebody else's shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, had that compassion for others. Mm -hmm. Because I know the struggles. But it's just been... And I feel like that that what that pushed me to learn more English, like to learn and keep going, just to be able to help others. What what was the do you have a moment where um after you came here that you felt like now I got it? Do you remember when that moment was for you? That it was like you felt like you had you had a hold of the language. Um <laughs> Well Wow. Uh, I've been through so many jobs, Marco. Uh -huh. <laughs> so like I, the job and the, yeah, the biggest thing for a yeah, team helping. That was the, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Every time somebody offers me a job or I found out, like, it's a job opportunity, I was like, I'm going to take you. This is my opportunity to learn more English, the language, uh -huh. and to be able to help people. Uh -huh. So... I don't know, somehow I started working as a custodian at the school, public schools, and then they offered me this position, and I just took it, and I know my English wasn't good, but I remember when in my interview with Mr. Harper at Sandy Hill, I was like, look, I don't know that much English, but if you teach me, I'll learn. Uh -huh. And that was it, and I was like, this is, this is my time, because I'm going to be here learning, too, with the yeah. kids. So it was just amazing. So, wow, I feel like um, I improve a lot a couple three years oh. mm -hmm. Dang, yeah but i remember when i started working at sandy hill i was like what are they saying i don't have a clue what they're talking about all of these teachers and i was like no i just i gotta stick with this job because i'm learning that takes courage it took courage mm -hmm. yeah and then uh finally three years ago like i said i was having this feel that it was i was missing something and I started hosting activities with my own resources in Mexico with uh -huh. a different organizations and son in Colombia. And I was like, if I'm here in this country and I'm making a little bit of money, it's my time to help my uh -huh. people in my country. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, everything started there. I was like, this is it. And I uh, started making friends on Facebook and I started adding people and I found out that it was not just me. Uh -huh. There was more people over there having the same idea and the same dream, like to change the world and to do something for our kids. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, when the pandemic started, when I lost my job, and that makes me so emotional. <laughs> How was that? Because um, 
they close schools. They close schools and um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I just lost my job. What am I going to do? But um, I have my kids and and they give me hope. <laughs> and that's how everything start. Worldwide hope. Worldwide hope. That's beautiful, man. It was so hard because I'm a single man and all my family is in Mexico. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, this is not time to give up. Mm-hmm. This is my time to show people that, that I'm here for a reason. Uh-huh. And I'm here for a mission. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I told my daughter this phrase that I heard on Facebook. We are here for the reason, not for a season. <laughs> yes, yes, we're here for a reason, not, not for, for a, a season. season. So when I, I lost that. my job and I have a little bit of money, I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to give up. I had this dream for since I was a child. That's when everything uh-huh. came back in my uh-huh. head. Like, in the whole si- situations, <coughs> I was like, you can bring the beauty of you. Like, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So... I came with this, with this idea. I was like, this is time for fi- for finally doing my organization. And I started asking people, because I, ha- I didn't have a clue how to start a, a these um, organiza- non-profit organizations. So I started contacting some friends, and I was like, can you just let me borrow your kid, come to my house and do some art and reading? So I was having like, a, when they closed the schools and I lost my job, I was like, I'm not going to stay at home and get depressed because uh-huh. my kids they really need me uh-huh. and I'm gonna teach them that there is hope uh-huh. and um so we started last year with seven kids in my house uh-huh. every weekend every weekend uh-huh. they were like five to eight years we were reading we were doing art you can find those pictures on uh-huh. my Facebook page um, and they were there happy. And I was just uh, starting to love it more. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is beautiful. Because you can see them smiling mm-hmm. and living. And they just want to stay in my house the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I just started loving them so much. And then when their mom, at the end of the day, they came to my house. And I was like, it's time to go. And they were like, no. They were crying. No, we, we want to stay with Miss G. <laughs> uh-huh. Because they love art. So we were, like, playing and in, the, in my backyard, we play soccer, so I was just doing a lot. But at the same time, that was my medicine. Uh-huh. That kids saved me. Therapeutic. That kids saved me. They saved me from the depression. <laughs> so it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, thinking about hope. I have hope. Everything is going to change. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to get the virus. I'm not going to be scared. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep having hope. Uh-huh. And that's when I started, like, I'm going to just name it Worldwide Hope. Uh-huh. And I look at my daughter, and I was like, actually, my Gmail, it has uh, my daughter's uh, birthday, the uh-huh. number, because she was my hope. That's and beautiful. I was like, <laughs> yeah. So I started looking for the logo and asking, like, what do you think about this color? So many uh-huh. friends in Colombia and Mexico. And so it has, the logo, it has a little bit from everybody. Yeah, man. Like, this color, now you should do this. And I was like, yes, let's do it. So we <laughs> came up with this idea, all of us. Uh-huh. So World Wide Hope is not my organization. It's everybody's. Yes. Um, so we start with the logo. A friend here in Cambridge, he, he helped me finally to to design it with the colors that I wanted because uh-huh. I know white is like um, like the kids mm-hmm. pure pure mm-hmm. and then the green is the or the mm-hmm. earth, earth the planet mm-hmm. and um, I just love my logo too much uh-huh. <laughs> and then um, I started getting more excited to see the kids being uh-huh. like happy in my house mm-hmm. and I was like this is it I found my mission. Finally, after all these years, since I was little, this is my mission. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop then. This year, in January, um, it was like a trash uh, cleanup day, I guess, oh. with uh, Shore Rivers. Yeah. And that's when I met Marco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was, I was ready. I, was, I, t- I remember I texted my sister and I was like, Hey, I'm ready. I'm gonna introduce my 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 project to the community. I know uh-huh. how, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. So I took my artwork to the place, 
behind Chesapeake College uh-huh. and my album, the uh-huh. photos, remember that? And all the pictures. All the, the pictures, binder. and I was like, this is it. And I don't even remember what I say. I know, all I remember is the people was clapping. Uh-huh. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I was amazed that day. I remember the day. That was the first day I met you. And I just remember, like, seeing that book, the binder, mm-hmm. all of the pictures, the story you were sharing, just thinking about, you know, where we were in yes. the world last January. Yes. I feel like everyone, especially because that was pretty much the first time we, had, mm-hmm. as a community, had come out together. Mm-hmm. And everyone was talking about dealing with depression dealing and loneliness. Depression. And then you just came out of out of there and you just opened up this book and it was all these smiles the and smile, the kids. The and you're kids. like, this is all since the pandemic. And I'm just like, what? Exactly. And I'm like, this is what we need. You're That's making it happen. Like, And so I'm just, that was <laughs> such a blessing. Such a blessing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so, I'm so thankful for you, Marco. You've been supporting us. us and um, kids, you know, our, my children love you. They're always asking for Marco. Where is Marco? Is he coming to do the cleanup today? <laughs> I mean, you like you know, it's like they they feed, they give they, the energy they that they do. give off is just mm-hmm. it feeds you, it motivates you. you yeah. Like it's it's stronger than this coffee, you know. Exactly, and, um, <laughs> they have too much energy. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, when I int- introduced my project to the community, and I was like, "This is it. I'm gonna um, if I'm gonna die one day, I'm just gonna leave a legacy." Uh-huh. The legacy of love for the planet. Yes. Then when I saw my phrase, then when I saw my phrase on the newspaper, I was like, yes, uh-huh. that's it. Yes, this is it. I don't, I don't care about. I care about the money, but I want to leave a legacy, a different uh-huh. legacy, a legacy of love. in the future. Packed in the future. Mm-hmm. And this is our new generation. So <laughs> she's so beautiful. Every time I think about it, let me tell you, Marco. I love my project so much that la- I learned how to make videos. Uh-huh. I learned how to make my flyers because uh-huh. I didn't want to pay. I was like, if I want to pay, I'd rather use that money for my kids, uh-huh. that, for the team, to spend them with them. So I just taught myself uh-huh. every night. I was until 2 a.m., try to ed- edit in uh-huh. videos and flyers, and I just, I just did it. I did my first flyer, uh-huh. and then I did my first video. Then when I started picking songs, I was always making sure that it was a song with a meaning yeah and tell, tell me about that what is uh when your your song choice process tell me what that's like i was like uh every time i pick a song i was thinking about my childhood uh-huh. so i was looking for songs that say something about my family uh-huh. or missing my family uh-huh. because uh, i was so happy but at the same time i was like having a hard time it's like, expressing what you're feeling inside yeah How do you feel about that, the separation? It's so hard. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to be in a different country. Mm-hmm. And every Christmas, mm-hmm. just to talk to your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I wasn't able to travel for nine years. Uh-huh. So I was just stuck in here. It was like being in jail, mm-hmm. waiting to see your family. So, this, I love Worldwide Hope so much because it has a big meaning. Uh Uh-huh. It's connecting. It is. And then when I start seeing my family in Mexico supporting me, Mm -hmm. I was start feeling happy. Uh Uh-huh. You know, like I was there, but I was happy at the same time (laughs) because I was like, yes, I have my family. Mm-hmm. supporting me in the distance and that is love mm-hmm.